Welcome to the beginning of a new Project Spark tutorial series. In this series, we're going to start from the very ground floor and ramp all the way up to creating a full game inside of Project Spark. But in order to start, we need to start with the most basic thing, and that's actually how to just navigate through Project Spark. So this quick intro tutorial is going to run you through that, and then we're actually going to get into creating. So to start out, when you jump into Project Spark, you have two choices. Do you want to play something by the community, or do you want to create something yourself? So let's jump into play first. Now play is where you get to play a lot of community creations, creations by Team Dakota, or go through Crossroads. And Crossroads is sort of like a choose your own adventure where you get to make a bunch of choices and then it creates a game from there for you. So let's jump into community games, which is gonna be, probably be the main place you're playing things in. The very first thing is you have a choice of going to a specific feed. Now in Project Spark, games and creations are organized by these feeds. Now go through a feed and find something that best matches with what you want to play. Right now I want to check out what's newest, so I click the newest creations, and you get to see a series of worlds that fits within the feed that you chose. Now at any point you can change that feed by going back here and then you have your options again. You also have a search bar where you can search worlds for something with a specific keyword. But say here I am very interested in playing Dragon Shrine. So I click on that and now here you're gonna have two options. You can play this creation or you can choose to remix it. And remixing jumps you into edit mode of that creation where you can add things on top of it, save it, and uh, this is a great learning tool where you can see how someone built something just by choosing remix. You also have a choice to, besides playing, um, if you really like this creation, you can add this to your favorites list. You can also choose to follow this creator. If you really like what this creator has been making and want to see some of their other creations, you can choose to follow them. You can also choose to comment on this world. This will open up our website in a new window where you can add a comment onto this person's creation. Or if you're seeing something very offensive, then you can report this game as offensive and our moderators will take a look. Now, if this game were to have uh, leaderboards, then you would see this leaderboards tab right here be selectable, and you could then see the scores of other people who are playing this game. Now that we know all that, you can jump in and go ahead and play this game. But we're not going to right now. Instead, we are going to talk about the create mode. So if you want to create something in Project Spark, this is what you click on. Now you have a few options. You can continue your most recent creation that you've been working on. You can create something with a world wizard, and what that does is this creates some land and gives you a few primer choices that you go through, so you're not starting from complete scratch. Or you can choose to start from complete scratch on a totally blank canvas with, with a default character and go from there. Or if you just want to understand how to build things in Project Spark, Learn to Create is a great tutorial that runs you through the basics of Spark. You also have My Creative Projects, and this brings you through all of the different creations that you've made inside of Project Spark. So you click on any one of these, and you go to your uh, projects page where you get to see all the different saves that you have of that project and get to select them. Now every 15 minutes, Project Spark will automatically save your game for you. If you want to create a bunch of extra saves, make sure to choose the Save As option when you're saving your creation so that you can save multiple versions of it. The last thing to quickly go through is our profile section, which is up here at the very top right hand side, which you can also click by uh, using the back button. So we go here and you see this is where it's giving you a bunch of stats about you and your profile, your total number of plays, number of upvotes you've received on creations, highest creation rating, average creation rating, how many people are currently following you. You also can look at the games that you have shared and you get to see all their individual stats right here, how many downloads they each have. Uh, then you can also look at your rewards and if someone has um, remixed your creation, added something on top of it and published it, you're going to get credit for that as well. So you get to see what kind of, uh, pe what people are doing with your creations and what kind of uh, credits you're getting for the things that people are doing with them. And this gives you extra XP, which is useful in, in growing levels. We also have a challenges section, and challenges are useful for gaining extra XP to grow levels, as well as uh, getting achievements. So this is where you can keep track of all of your different challenges, including timed ones, which change every day and week, uh, milestones, and goals. 
You also have a, have a choice to check your achievements, see your achievement status, and also go through our options, uh, our standard options like audio, video, controls. Game settings are pretty important. This, this runs you through a bunch of different things that you can do to change your creation experience in game settings. So make sure to check that out. So that's going to do it for this very brief primer into the things you can do in Project Spark. Now let's go ahead and jump into create mode, and that's what we're going to do in the very next video.